is a table. A table essentially is a container that holds data together. It is made of columns and rows. Columns, as you can see here, basically store the same type of data. In this particular case here, it's unit price, but it can also be date of sale, the client name, and so forth and so on. Rows, on the other hand, store attributes of a particular item. An item in this case here can be the product, but it can be a project, can be the names of things, can be whatever you want, as long as this item has same attributes. So this is what a table. And in Excel, a table has some features such as you can click on the header and then you can, you can sort it by ascending and descending order, or you can filter, you can just pick one of one choice in here. So there's a lot of things you can do and everything is going to be organized dynamically to you. There are some other filters such as adding totals to the table. So there are, you can add totals as you can have it here. And once you click here, you can choose whether you want to have an average or you can have the minimum or you can have the sum. Okay, so this is what a table is, which is different from the raw data that you have that you can also organize in sort of a table. The difference here is that like this is not containerized and you cannot do much on its own. Okay? But very often you're going to receive a file from someone that looks something like this and apparently it looks like a table, but it's not. And let's see why. So first, you can see the headers here. They do not have any sort of property to dynamically filter or sort in your data. Okay, so they, you can clearly see here that this is not a table. So what do you have to do here to fix it? Okay, there are a few mistakes in here that you need to fix. The first thing is that we're going to see several rows in this particular data here that is merged. Okay. You should not have merged cells in your table. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to get rid of them, okay? So you can see we have merged cells here. Here, we also have merged cells in this, in this column here. You also have merged cells in here and here. So the first thing you're going to do, we're going to unmerge everything, okay? So I'm going to press Ctrl A here, and I'm going to click on Merge Center. So it's going to unmerge everything. So you can see here, we already have this row here is no longer merged as well as this one in here, okay? So we need to fix now because as you can see, there are some empty cells that were supposed to have data. In this case here, the data is in store, so we're gonna fix it, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna fill all these empty cells here with the correct date, okay? So that's the first thing you're gonna do. And to do it, I'm gonna just select. I'm gonna select all the way down here. I'm gonna press F5, special, blanks, Okay, and then I'm going to press equals. So that's it. Let me just clean here because there are some extra things in here. And one thing to notice here, whenever we filled with this method, okay, it was filled with a formula. So we need to get rid of this, okay, because in principle, uh, tables should never ever have formulas referring to rows above. So that's going to copy and paste everything. And by doing it, basically, I'm going to get rid of all the formulas, okay? So no more formulas in here, as you can see. So that's the, that's the first thing. Second, we have to get rid of these rows here, okay? As you can see, they hold very important information. And you don't want to have these stored in subheaders, okay? You want to have these stored in columns. This is very important information. You want to know in which store such an item has been sold. So we're going to add this column, okay? So make sure you always have information stored in columns. So let me do this. What we have here now, it's something that looks like a table. Still, we don't have the properties, but it's very easy to add the properties now. So let me do it right now. I'm going to select the whole area by pressing Ctrl A. And I'm, and I'm going to come to insert and click on table. Another way to do this is to select everything and press Ctrl T or Command T for Mac users. And then you're going to have here the whole range that you want to set your table on. And you can also check whether or not you want to have the headers in our first row, okay? So I'm, as I have the headers here, I'm going to check this and I'm going to click OK. So basically what we have here, 
we have everything set as a table i'm just going to fix uh, the color okay and this is a table but there are a few more things that we want to do here to really make like a good quality table okay when you look here the first thing that stands out is this color but these background colors in the item name column and you should ask why do we have it and usually each background color means something in this particular case here means that the store does not have the product in stock anymore okay so this is important information that you also want to convey in your table so do not add colors to have information present in your table just add an extra column and make sure that this information is in there okay so let me add here i'm going to put in stock and as you can see because we have a table everything adjusts then dynamically to us but already created a new column called in stock and i'm going to set these as true or false okay so if it is in stock it's going to be true and i'm just going to copy everything here and set the ones that are false okay so this is false what else this is false what else is false this true is false this is false and this is false okay so whenever it's false mean that there is nothing in stock and then whenever it's true means there is in stock i'm going to get rid of this now okay so we don't need the color so i'm going to come here to format and i'm going to clear formats and as you, as you can see here everything's much cleaner now uh, another thing i'm going to do i am going to get rid of the borders just to get cleaner data okay just to looks cleaner to read better and easier and that's basically done so let's go through each one of the columns now to see what else we can do so as you can see here we have the unit price and it is best practice whenever you have a number to add the unit of the number in this case here of course is currency we're going to assume it's a us dollar product okay so we're going to add usd here or we can also add the a dollar sign so that's going to add the dollar sign in here okay or let me just do like this dollar sign okay and also the total revenue should read the dollar sign as well so i'm just going to increase the sign the size of the column and now it's clear that these are all uh units uh, us dollar sales okay times the quantity sold again you can put here as just a number if you want to be very clear okay something like this and then you know that this number here is the multiplication of both of this and again it's best practice whenever you have to multiply two columns to make the multiplication here so you can see equals to this times this and let me press enter i'm going to copy everything below and as you can see here the tables already has this property where it names range for you okay so it, what it means you're multiplying the unit price column by the content sold column so this is very useful and gets even clearer for you what you're multiplying again calculations in table should be only done in column by column and using the same rows okay you can never do something like this like this times the row above or below okay don't do it because it's just gonna mess up your table but always do calculations row by row another thing you can see here have some uh date of sales okay so let me just gonna make it bigger and as you can see here some dates are not formatted and the ones that are formatted like these ones in here it is quite difficult to read them so what i usually do i format them in the following way so i come here to my format cells you can press ctrl one to get in here i go to custom so i go to first date i'll set as a date and i come to customs and i'm going to change here the type of of format okay i'm going to say dd dash mmm dash yyy and as you can see here that's the format of my date okay and it's clear to the user that what you're what you have here is a date and we have 5th of january 2022 okay when i press ok so you can see it's much easier to understand uh what you're reading in here okay next we have two columns in here that we can also make it better as you can see the first one holds the first and the last name of the user and the second column holds the the place the city and the state where the store is located okay but we're going to change this okay so in we want to make this as granular as possible we want to make this as granular as possible so we're going to break down the client name into first and last name as well as the delivery location okay we're going to break it in city and in state okay so let's going to do this i'm going to add here one more column let me going to add here one more column it's going to be client first name it's going to be client 
last name. And I'm going to just separate this by space. So if you go here to data, text to columns, space, so next, space, and finish. And we have here, we're going to make the same thing in here. Okay, so I'm going to select the column again. I'm going to add new, I'm going to add a new column. I'm going to select, I'm going to select the column and add a new one. Insert. So it's going to be delivery, delivery city, and delivery state. Okay, so, and I'm going to, again, come to data, text to columns. And I'm going to now have to split them by comma. Okay, finish. Okay, so that's basically it. That's it for today. So now you have a data that you can organize, you can sort, and you can work with, which is much better than the first one that we have received. If you like this video, please click on the subscribe button, and I look forward to see you in my next one.